What's up everybody? Senior producer Chris McGraw here. Much like everyone else in the country slash world, um, automotive journalists have been kind of stuck inside these last few weeks, as it should be. I know out here in Colorado, we stopped getting vehicles because it is not a non-essential service, which I happen to agree with, um, though I'm sure some in my industry would disagree and uh, you know, fleets are still going out in different states, but that's just how they're running things here, um, which I think is probably the responsible way to do things. But um, as I am finishing up all of the projects that I have already shot and uh, had on my plate for the year, I started looking at some of my older work, uh, both in photos and video. Um, and I decided to do just kind of a little behind the scenes, how we shot this um, on some of these videos. I think the first one, I've been to a lot of places. Um, you know, we did a bunch of stuff with different cars in Japan, which was really great. We did, we drove Subarus through Patagonia, which I'm definitely going to do in a future video. Uh, Ford Ranger in New Zealand, Ranger Raptor in Australia, uh, camper van in Iceland, all great trips. But to start this off, I want to to go through, um, I don't know, it's hard for me to say this is my favorite video or this was my favorite trip. There are a lot of factors that go into um, trips and their impact on me personally and the videos that I make um, with them. And so while I wouldn't say this is necessarily the best video I've ever made, um, I would say that this trip was one of my favorites and it happened in 2018 right before I moved out to Colorado. This is my last trip before I moved and it was the 30th anniversary of the Volkswagen California. The Volkswagen California, if you are not familiar, is a camper van that we do not get here in the United States despite its name. Uh, but Volkswagen shipped a fleet of them over so that we could drive them in California for the 30th anniversary. And so let's take a look at that video that we have up. Uh, if you haven't seen the original video, I will link it down below in the description. And you should definitely watch that first, and then we can go through and kind of talk about how we made that video. When I think of Volkswagen camper vans, my mind is immediately filled with thoughts of 1960s Cal So this, this first camper van that they showed is this old Volkswagen and um, the guy who owns that orange camper van actually started a surf school out of it and now is uh, owns the largest surf school in California which is kind of cool and um, we were able to get a couple of clips and throw together a different video with him in it I'll link that one down below as well uh, total um, <laughs> Total stereotypical look of a uh, of a surfer dude from California, but um, yeah, the vans have changed a little bit since then. California and surfers camping on the beach in two tone VWs. Ah, uh, the second. Man, I'm st I'm gonna stop a lot, but the, the second camper van uh, with the the wild uh, California lettering on the front. So the first place that we stopped for the night, we slept two nights. So yeah, it was three days, two nights, and we slept both the nights in the camper van and um the first place we stopped had this old one and it was on this hill overlooking the pacific ocean it was unbelievable um and the flower it had just rained the flowers were blooming and you could smell the ocean it was a fantastic i actually have i'm looking over on this monitor here because i have a photo of that specific van as my desktop background um and uh oh man yeah that that location was great we had a barbecue up there and that's where we spent the night uh, right on the uh, on the ocean. It comes as no surprise that Volkswagen's most recent version of the camper van is named after the Golden State. What might come as a surprise is the fact that the California it rained a lot on this trip, production this year has never been available in North America, which is pretty par for the course when I visit California. But not normally. Sorry, camper van fans. This van was shipped here from Europe by VW. So for these drone shots, we were driving along. I think it was our second day 
basically what we did, we flew into LAX, picked up the van in LA, and they told us, all right, you need to be here for camping for the night by X PM. I think it was like six or seven. And that's when we'll have dinner and you'll camp there for the night. Then you can leave the next day. Um, and then you got to be at this place the next night. So we pretty much had free reign over like what we wanted to do with the vehicles, which is nice. A lot of times uh, automaker trips will be like planned down to the minute of what they want you to do with the vehicle. And if you're writing, not as big of a deal, but when you're producing a video, you know, it, it takes a while. Um, you know, three days is... I mean, we made a 17 minute long video out of this three days. It's not bad. Um, and uh, it, it just takes longer to get stuff done. So I was very happy to have like that whole day. And Alex Malberg, uh, my producer, and I could figure out what we wanted out of the vehicle, what we wanted out of the day. And we were able to stop um, at this beautiful spot. The rock is like this maroon red. Uh, like this clay and then because it had just rained all the plants were super green where maybe they wouldn't be normally um, because at parts we were driving through a desert and uh, so it was just uh, this gorgeous shot we I must have drove up and down that stretch of road alongside this hill I don't know how many times but uh, we just we used up all the batteries we had in that drone uh, getting these uh, shots and I am super happy with them Plus, uh, the California head outlet so we could charge up everything the night, uh, the night, that night to get more shots the next day. But, um, with, with shots in general on trips, let me get some coffee here with shots in general on trips. A lot of times it's not like a commercial shoot where I will have, you know, scouted out locations for stuff on trips like this, since everything is is super compressed time wise, you're driving through areas where you don't you're not familiar with the area unless you live you know near there. And so on a trip like this, or any trip really, you can't be like, oh, that's a pretty nice shot. I wonder if there'll be something better later. No, if you think there's an area that you want to shoot at, stop and shoot at that area. If you drive 10 miles after you're done shooting and find an even better looking spot, great. You have, you know, better looking footage and you have the footage before. But if you keep driving, you're not going to get, you're not going to ever turn around and go back. So if you think, man, this place looks great, shoot there. Don't wait for something better to come along. I would rather have all my shots in the can and then drive 15 miles and realize, oh my gosh, this place looks even better than regret not having shot anything, you know, 15 miles back on the road. Oh my gosh, yeah, just a gorgeous place along these lakes. No one buys a camper van for the driving experience. They buy it for the traveling experience and the sleeping experience. This camper van is a lot like the one we reviewed in Iceland once the roof is raised. That one was an unreliable Renault traffic that had been converted in. Yeah, so 2018, 2017, 2018 were a fairly big camper van years for me personally. Uh, 2017, we did go to Iceland, like it shows in this video, and the camper van broke down. That was. Uh, that was a fantastic trip for a multitude of reasons. Um, having the vehicle break down while not ideal in like normal life or on a vacation or something was actually really good for the video, but that's a different video. I'll talk about that later. Um, this camper van, the Volkswagen California, it was so much better than that one. <laughs> this one, uh, you know, it felt like everything was thought through and it was just fantastic to drive and sleep in to a camper provided that this one doesn't break down this california is miles ahead of that vehicle the two beds in this car so this next shot at 125 this was our second campsite and we were in the middle of the desert it had just rained and as we were driving through the de desert all of these plants were blooming it was it was gorgeous and i think I scarfed down dinner super fast. I don't even know if Alex ate dinner or if he just scarfed it down super fast, but like the light at this second campsite was phenomenal. And so we just kept shooting and shooting and shooting. Um, 
yeah, it was, it was a fantastic campsite in the middle of the desert in California. And some of these shots that we got from there, I'm just super happy about. Who has been stuck with the bottom fold-out bunk is 6'4", and there has been more than ample room. And most people on this trip, um, they they had the camper van to themselves. So it was like a writer, maybe they weren't shooting a video, or um, I don't know. They, they didn't have to share the camper van. Uh, Alex and I have been in uh, camping situations multiple times before, um, and so sharing a camper van was no big deal to us, uh, which was nice because then I got to bring along an extra shooter, which this video wouldn't have happened without, so that was super cool. And uh, it is crazy. I slept in the upper part of that camper van. He slept in the bottom, which tends to be, like in Iceland, he slept in the bottom, and in this one he slept on the bottom of the camper van and uh he's six four and was able to sleep in this van which is just crazy to think about there's another shot of that campsite and how gorgeous it was that was actually at dusk that night so let's talk about transmissions normally i'm all about manual gearboxes they're more fun to drive in my opinion and they offer more control than their automatic counterparts this vw california is one of the exceptions if you get a california beach you can only get the diesel in automatic. The diesel I think shooting uh, in car talking like I'm doing right now, you got to have two cameras. Like one GoPro is fine if you want to cut away, but if you have someone else there, I love having two camera angles just so the shot doesn't get stale. You get a few more options, but the automatic still comes out on... And then that was, uh, instead of just having a suction mount with a GoPro on the side, we brought our big suction mount and was able to um, put some of the Panasonic GH4s on the side of the vehicle, which allow for a shallow depth of field, which you don't get out of a GoPro. Just a different looking shot. You get more control of your shot, and I really like that as well. In the diesel version versus 39.2 in the manual version. There's a time and place for manual transmissions. And for me, this isn't a vehicle that I would waste the fuel economy on just so I can get a manual gearbox. There's that, those aerial shots again. Actually, I think at the end of this shot, you might be able to see Alex in the bottom left. Yep, there he is. <laughs> All right, so let's check out this I was also very happy with the music, which isn't always the case. Step up from the Volkswagen California Beach, heading around to the back. First thing you'll notice is this black area here. You open it up. So we originally produced this as like a suite of videos, just you know, more videos, more video views per video, more video views overall, but this one I edited them all together. Right here. And I like it so much more. Sleeping bags plus a bin full of some other stuff. Uh, we have our bags up here, light switch here, and actually we're using a gimbal here, once you're parked, you can which is just 100% necessary, in my opinion, All right. for shoots like this. Closing is pretty easy. You don't have to slam it. Close it nice and soft, and it'll finish closing on its own. All right, let's come over to the side and check out the interior. So uh, one of the things that we've learned traveling around in camper vans is that it can get dirty very quickly. So we have somewhat of a rule. We keep our boots here. You can tell that we've been keeping our boots here <laughs> super dirty, but our carpet is relatively clean. You have two options. You can use the carpet. Some people don't like the carpet because they get it too muddy. You can just pull it up and you have a hard surface that's a lot easier to clean. It's crazy to look back on something. This is um, this is two years ago that we shot this, and all these memories are you know coming back to me now. Uh, as we were shooting this like walk around portion of the video, um, you know people are always driving by honking their horns and stuff. Uh, but I just remember, like in the background there was this huge reservoir and there was just trash everywhere, and so we took some time to clean it up a little bit. Um, we had like, we found like a bag and filled it with a bunch of garbage, but, um, but yeah, this, the, like overlooking this reservoir from this shot was just phenomenal. And, uh, there's something about being in California in the spring, driving through like up the coast that just like, like we're really fortunate. Like if you live in the United States or if you've traveled to California, you're really fortunate to have something like that so close. And, and I mean, I live in Colorado now, there's tons of places that I love to drive. It's different place obviously with the ocean there and it just really especially right now makes me want to get the heck out of the house 
um, and go on a road trip, especially in something like this where you have like camper, everything's set up. You can just pull out on the side of the road wherever you can camp, maybe in some BLM land or something, and uh, and camp for the night. Uh, makes me really, really miss the days where I could just get the heck out of my house. First things first, we got a little flashlight in here, which has been helpful at nighttime. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, we're at, so I'm at 418 right now. I'm, I'm kind of giving everybody a tour of this van. Uh, at this point, I've only been in the van for, I don't know, a couple hours. This was still day one. Uh, we try to uh, shoot as much as possible on day one um, out of the three days, just so we have a lot in the can, in, you know, in the bucket, and then we could just focus on getting better stuff, just getting better shots than we got day one and on day two, and then on day three, try to get better shots, um, especially when you're shooting like three days in a row, sixteen to eighteen hour days. Uh, you know, at least me personally, I get kind of tired. Uh, by that third day. So by front loading all the shooting, you're, you know, you're still energized, you're still ready to go. Plus, you know, you have it all in the bag and you can try to get better stuff after that. So um, because this was shot the first day and I had only spent a few hours with it, thankfully Volkswagen had a few of the designers and, and PR people there from Germany that could walk us through the van. And so basically we got to the airport they showed us the van, they walked us through, and I'm just like writing down notes the entire time. Because I know in a few hours, I'm going to have to be by myself giving a, a walk around tour of this vehicle. So that's kind of where I came up with, or that's where I got all this information from, like the flashlight under the seat, stuff that I probably wouldn't have noticed if I was just doing a quick walk around. Um, a lot of times, uh, people make car reviews look like they just hopped in a car and reviewed something. That's definitely not the case. Um, I like to spend a lot of time in the car before I review it. And by a lot, I mean like a few days, uh, cause generally we only get vehicles for a week at a time, but on trips like this, you have to hop in and talk about it almost immediately. So taking the time to take notes beforehand and get familiarized with all the, uh, facts and details about the car definitely helps. It also helps having a producer in the passenger seat or behind the camera during a walk around to tell you when you've been an idiot and you've screwed up. Um, so that's definitely what has happened in the past for me. Yeah, and that's how I did this walk around so quickly at nighttime. And it just sits in there and charges when you're not using it. Hopping in here, we have our cup holder and a little towel rack. Yeah, there you go. You can see that reservoir in the background and through the window is the sink. We don't have any water currently in here. So if you turn it on, nothing happens. Move this over. All right, so the rest for the next few minutes is just kind of more of me going through the vehicle, which you can check out if you really want to see it um, in the link below. So let's get to the next part. All right. Skipping ahead to right around eight minutes. You can stake them down. Really so like this is actually at the next campsite. Power, we're, not, we're on uneven terrain right now, and like yesterday it was raining a lot. We're kind of on the side of a cliff, which you can see one. starting at, let's see, let's skip up to like the 9.15 mark. And you can protect yourself from the sun. So this is a drone shot. Alex is actually controlling the drone like it maps out its own path, and it'll do a circle. And so that was a lot, that allowed us to sit while it, the drone kind of spun around the van. And uh, <laughs> let's see if you can see it. There is a tree in the way and the drone just clips the, like real quick, it's about to happen right now. Oh, there we go. And it, it th flew through the tree, but the whole time we're watching it like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh! Roof and your refrigerator. So here's the button for the refrigerator and you can go anywhere from level one all the way up to so yeah still showing some of the stuff inside and so on on press trips generally we stay at hotels and you know you drive during the day go to a really long like three to four hour dinner and then go to bed and then wake up the next day and drive some more this was nice because we were staying in the car so you could really get yourself um you could really get familiarized with the vehicle that we we're staying in um and 
for those who have not slept in a rooftop tent or in a camper van before, it is surprisingly comfortable. Um, probably easier for younger people. I mean, I'm only 30. Um, no, I wouldn't probably want to do that in my 70s or 80s, but maybe I will. Who knows? Um, and so it was really nice to get. I got really good sleep in this camper van. Um, the second night, there were some dogs that were running around. And in the middle of the night, we woke up and heard coyotes. And so I actually was like wide awake at like four in the morning and nobody else is going to be up till like seven. And there was a building there where we had eaten dinner at. So I like grabbed the dogs and we we chilled on this couch that was in this building for the next three hours, kind of like dozing in and out of sleep, uh, just keeping them away from the coyotes, which were everywhere. And so... The deal with this video is with the walk arounds and with the showing how to raise and lower the tent on the roof, we wanted to give someone a feeling of, hey, I've never been in a Volkswagen California. I'm from the States, never even seen a Volkswagen California because I've never sold them here. Um, what is it like to be in one? And, and I think after this video, you could take a look and see, like, you could watch this video and then you know, grab one of these and go camping and kind of know what you're doing with it. Um, and that was kind of our, that was our goal. The only thing we didn't show off was the shower uh, feature, which is really just like a hose that you can like clip to the back door. Uh, mostly because we stopped at YMCA's on the way and that's how we showered every day. Um, stopped at like gyms and stuff. Uh, which is what I would suggest if you have that option. If you don't, um, there is a shower. You can use it. We never put the water in it. It's a little ridiculous. Maybe not a little ridiculous. I've used worse showers uh, camping before, definitely. But um, it's not It's not like a hot water shower. not ready to use it as a bed. What you can do is just push it up. Good to go. The California handles better than Gosh, what a great, what a great place to drive. This thing feels like a sports car. That thing was a lot taller and was blown around a lot by the wind, but it also just felt... Camper vans are also kind of interesting because, you know, with a car, you're talking about driving dynamics a lot, and camper vans, that's not what you're worried about too much. That being said, the California did drive pretty nicely for a camper van. So let's get down to price. And in Europe, it costs roughly 55,000 euro. People here would much rather spend their money on a ginormous RV that is basically the size of a second home than to buy a diesel California. It's just not big enough. And that's a huge disappointment. I could definitely see myself driving around in one of these for well over a month. Just me, my dog, my wife, driving around the country, and it would be totally... I remember thinking after making this video, I could definitely live in one of these. Get yourself a gym membership that has locations all over the country. I still have yet to buy a vehicle a since I moved out to Colorado, and if they started selling these in the United States, I would be very tempted, though I would imagine they would cost a ton of money. A Mercedes is actually coming out, came out with one, and it was at the uh, Chicago Auto Show this year called The Weekender, and they haven't revealed the price, or at least they hadn't at the time of the Chicago Auto Show, and I'm very interested in hearing how much that would cost versus this. Um, I'm hoping to drive The Weekender at some point this year, though who knows with all the travel restrictions, I'm um, just staying at home for the time being, but it would be nice to be able to compare the California to the Mercedes version. I have uh, been in different like Mercedes vans that have been converted to camper vans, and I've also just used a Sprinter 2500 4x4 as a camper van. There's just like nothing in the back, so I threw down sleeping pads and whatnot. And that was fairly comfortable. It was huge. Um, and I've also used my uh, Crosstrek as a camper as well, uh, we have like an inflatable mattress that fits perfectly in the back of that. And I've driven, you know, everywhere from Colorado National Monument to go mountain biking to Aspen to Grand Canyon, Arch National, like a bunch of different places in that. And that was not too bad, but it's different, like sleeping out of your car versus sleeping in a camper van, two totally different experiences. One is built for, you know, camping and one is not. So I would love to get um, one of these and, and just like live out of it for a month. On a ginormous RV that is basically the size of a second home than to buy a diesel California. It's just not big enough. And that's a huge disappointment. 
I could definitely see myself driving around in one of these for well over a month. Just me, my dog, my wife, driving around the country, and it would be totally comfortable. Yeah, there's no bathroom. You could stop at places that have those. Get yourself a gym membership that has locations all over the country. I thought I was being very clever by wearing this blue t-shirt. Uh, <clears throat> which is actually, I th believe, like a 60s Ford Econoline um, that's packed, you know, full of gear, uh, surfboards, and all this stuff on top, uh, just really hammering home the uh, the van part of it. So to have something like that from the factory would be fantastic. I would love to drive around in this thing. Up front, we have a modern infotainment system. Apple CarPlay is included. It's a touchscreen, and all the controls are very familiar if you've driven a boat. As you can tell, a lot of the shots are moving, like shots of the interior are moving shots. And um, we do that because it's just more visually interesting to watch moving shots uh, than just having static stuff. If you're by yourself and you have you know, a camera attached to a suction mount on your passenger window aimed at the infotainment system. You know, that's great. Um, but thankfully, in this case, we for some of these shots, we were parked, so we were able to move. Uh, we shoot a lot of them at slow motion. So like the GH5, Panasonic GH5 that I use, I think can go up to, gosh, um, one, I don't know. I don't know what it can go up to, 144 frames per second or something. I'll have to look it up, but at full HD, I tend to use 120 frames per second, so that's five times slowed down, uh, and what that allows me to do is, say I'm doing like a pan of the infotainment system, and I'm going to start from behind the passenger seat and reveal the infotainment system. It allows me, instead of like going really slowly, which as you can tell, like my hands are going to be shaking a little bit, it allows me to do a quick movement. And in that movement, my shot's going to be smoother. And because it's slowed down five times in uh, post or in the, in the, once you import the footage, it automatically slows it down to 24 frames per second. So it'll be five times slower. It'll be the length that you want it to be. And the smoothness will be there as well, which is nice. And that's primarily what I use the GH5 slow motion uh, for. Uh, there have been times like on Pikes Peak where I've used it just to see, you know, like everybody's getting shots of the cars ripping up at regular uh, speed. So I, I shot everything in slow motion. And that allows, I mean, you can still speed it up in post if you want it regular speed. But it just gives you like a smoother shot. Um, and I do that a lot with interiors and detail shots. And so you can see in some of these shots here, let's go back. Um, so at like 1509, that's a shot that Alex did from the passenger seat with, uh, GH5. So he's, he's using a, uh, a mirrorless camera and there's a shallower depth of field, which is why the stuff out the window is blurred. And then if you wait a second to 1513, um, that shot is a GoPro, and you could tell the difference. We we did color correct so that the shots look similar. Actually, the previous shot may have been an A7S. So I'll have to ask him. Um, but uh, we color corrected the shots so they look similar, but you could tell the mountains in the background out the window of the shot at 1513, which is a GoPro shot, are in focus, and that's because the sensor on the GoPro is a lot smaller, so more things are in focus. And then the A7S, which I believe is what he was using, A7S or GH5. A7S is a full frame camera. Uh, the GH5 is micro four thirds. Either way, their sensors are so much larger than those on a GoPro, and that allows you to get kind of a blurred background. So that way I'm in focus, the background is blurred as compared to the GoPro where everything's just gonna be in focus. Eating up front is comfortable, which is gonna be a big deal when you're taking a car like this on a road trip and I'm upright I feel I really like the GoPro shots from the driver's window because you get to see a lot of the shot you see out the driver's side side window and the windshield that helps me remain connected as well the modern safety features are nice but they can be a bit annoying so we're I tend to like the mirror shots as well everything's out of focus except for the mirror and the stuff that's in the mirror which is cool 
button to turn it off. It turns off the rear camera. But it can be overdone. I just want the beeping to stop. I can see that I'm not going to hit anything, but I need to see the camera to make sure. Another thing is the start stop. I turned that off immediately. We were stopped at a stoplight and we we're about to go and the engine cuts out and it took quite a bit of time to get going again. Other than that, really the worst thing about this van is that it's not offered in the United States. So at 1618, that was the last in-car shot and we got back to the office and I was editing this and Originally, I think I probably could have ended it there and just done a bunch of B-roll shots, but I wanted to kind of emphasize how I felt about this van. The trip itself was fantastic. The van was even better, and I I was really surprised at how much I found myself in love with this van, and so um, we decided to do some voiceover, which is something that we do a lot. I mean, I have this microphone for a reason, um, and... I think with voiceover, you you with vo when you add voiceover to a video, you really step it up in, as far as like a level of quality. It does take some writing either beforehand or after after the fact, but you're able to say stuff that maybe you are thinking now. After you you know, it takes a couple of days to develop an opinion about something. At least for me, it does, and so. Um, this was a great way for me to kind of sum up how I felt about the vehicle without having to figure it out, figure without having to figure it out there in person. That being said, we did shoot an outro there. I just thought that the voiceover did a better job at telling people how I felt about the vehicle. So we ended up using the voiceover instead. Um, we do that quite a bit where we'll shoot something like we'll shoot intro, outro and all this middle stuff. And then I'll be like, you know what? This will be better you know, showing B-roll and just having voiceover. But it's good while you're on a shoot to have the option, right? So if I if I say, you know what, I'm just going to do voiceover and I don't shoot it while I'm at the event, I am not giving myself the option as an editor to use an in-person or voiceover. At least here where we shot an outro while we were there and then I shot and then I recorded voiceover, I gave myself the option to use either one. So just get shoot everything, <laughs> get everything, and then you'll definitely not hate yourself as much while you're editing the video. It's not a beast on the track or a monster off-road. Man, those drone shots are phenomenal, and the best one is about to come still. The most memorable vehicle in your stable. This home away from home has certainly been the most comfortable camper van we've tested, and it can easily be daily driven, which is something that cannot be said about its competitors. So please, email, tweet, Facebook, and Instagram VW. If they hear from enough of us, the next 30 years might feature a California that's available stateside. Wait for it, my favorite shot. There we go, right here, driving through the mountains. We were so pumped after getting that shot. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching. That's how we shot this video. Um, have a few different videos that I would love to do this for as well. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to hear from me, anything further. Um, I'm gonna be, it sounds like we're all gonna be stuck inside for the time being for a little while, so I can make plenty more of these. And uh, also let me know in the comments below if there's a specific video you want me to address with this. Um, finally, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It helps us make more videos uh, and hit that bell, ring that bell. We do quite a bit of content. We've been streaming like four days out of the week with our video game content, you know, different car games. If you're into that, check that out on our site and on our YouTube page. And uh, we've also we're going to start ramping up review content once we can get in vehicles, which fingers crossed will be soon. Thanks for watching and stay healthy out there.